To drink or not to drink, that is the question. In this video, we're going to be talking about how alcohol affects our body's physiology, our hormones, and fertility so that you can determine whether at this moment in time, with your particular health goals in mind, alcohol is something which should be included into your lifestyle. Now, I'm Italian, and growing up, I have memories of my great aunt mixing a drop of red wine in my water and calling it Medicina Rossa, red medicine. This great aunt, incidentally, went on to live into very old age and was as sharp as a tack until the bitter end. There are plenty of studies on longevity which look at compounds such as resveratrol contained in red wine which have been shown to have beneficial effects on the body. <sighs> But does this mean that we should all be drinking red wine every day for health and longevity? Maybe not. Oops. Deleted. Now, a lot of us seek refuge in that glass of wine at the end of the day as a way to wind down from the day's stressors. I remember doing a stressful period finding myself having the odd glass of wine a lot more frequently than before. And after a few weeks of this evening ritual, I started noticing that for the first time in years, I was getting PMS symptoms, irritability, mood swings, and skin breakouts. And my periods, which are usually pain-free, were starting to get uncomfortable. And it's not just me. A lot of my clients report feeling the same way too when their alcohol consumption consumption increases, and their symptoms seem to reduce when they reduce their alcohol consumption. So how exactly does alcohol affect our hormones? Let's take a look. Alcohol disrupts blood sugar. Now, when we drink alcohol, it will cause blood sugar to rise, triggering the release of insulin. And insulin's job is to take glucose out of the blood and into the cells, making blood sugar fall back down again. However, heavy drinking is often associated with insulin imbalance, which could then lead to more serious health issues such as diabetes. Whenever we consume food or drink which causes a quick spike in blood sugar, such as alcohol, then the drop in blood sugar will be a lot more noticeable. Regular consumption of alcohol can lead to hypoglycemia, low low blood sugar, which can cause symptoms such as lightheadedness and fatigue, but also predispose us to overeating. Have you ever experienced the munchies after drinking alcohol? That will be your blood sugar dropping and our body desperately trying to get it back up with a quick hit of energy. And let's face it, the food choices we make when we have a few drinks are not always the most nourishing, right? I'm thinking of things like crisps and fried foods, pizzas or burgers, you know, the stuff we crave when we're walking home from the pub. Or maybe that's just me. Now you may be thinking, well, that's a cool story, but what does this have to do with my hormonal health? Well, blood sugar balance and hormonal health are very closely linked. When our blood sugar drops, our body sees that as a stressor and will release adrenaline and cortisol to get that blood sugar back up. And if we're constantly on a blood sugar roller coaster, we will constantly be pumping out cortisol, which will have a negative impact on the production of our sex hormones, especially progesterone, which amongst other things is the hormone which supports a healthy pregnancy. Progesterone is the precursor hormone to cortisol, and when our body perceives a stress, such as low blood sugar, it will prioritize the production of cortisol over progesterone. Hey presto, we have our ourselves a hormonal imbalance. If you're interested in finding out more about hormonal imbalance, check out our other video. Interestingly, I often see women who are running on adrenaline due to stressful lives, not eating enough or well, or over-exercising, reaching for that alcoholic drink to wind down at the end of the day. I was one of them, so no judgment here. However, one thing I've noticed is that once you work on blood sugar regulation throughout the day, most people will find that they no longer have the desire to drink in the evenings. I've seen this happen with countless clients, as well as myself, and it's always amazing to witness. Alcohol is taxing to the liver. Now let's not beat around the bush here. Alcohol is a toxic substance to our body. Whenever we drink it, our body will prioritize the detoxification and excretion of alcohol before anything else. Now our main organ of detoxification is our liver, which performs over 500 functions on a daily basis. When we drink alcohol, our liver will prioritize the elimination of this substance over all of its other functions. So what are some of the liver's main functions? One of them is detoxifying and eliminating excess estrogens from the body. Another one is converting our inactive thyroid hormone into the active form so that our thyroid works optimally. Another one yet is storing glucose molecules in the form of glycogen to carry us through periods of fasting such as the nighttime so that we can sleep through the night. So when our liver is busy working on getting rid of alcohol from our system, the estrogen that we have used and needs to get excreted is left circulating in our body, causing estrogen dominant symptoms including night sweats, painful periods, insomnia, weight gain, headaches, migraines, and mood 
mood swings. And if we're impairing the conversion of thyroid hormone in the liver, then we may be also experiencing hypothyroid symptoms such as cold hands and feet, sluggish digestion, low mood, weight gain, or the inability to lose weight. We may see frequent night wakings due to the liver running out of glycogen throughout the night. And an overburdened liver will also compromise our detoxification abilities, and we may see symptoms such as acne, brain fog, weight gain, and fatigue. So let's be kind to our hard-working liver and give it one less job to do. You can check out our other video on liver health and how to best support it. Alcohol is an estrogenic substance. Now, in addition to placing a burden on the liver and hindering the detoxification of estrogen from our bodies, alcohol itself has an estrogenic effect on our system. Studies have shown that moderate alcohol consumption affects our body's estrogen and progesterone levels, both in pre- and postmenopausal women. It not only increases the level of estrogen, but it has also been shown to decrease progesterone levels in premenopausal women. Remember, estrogen is the hormone of growth and proliferation. So when it is in excess or unopposed by progesterone, we may see growths where we don't want them. Things such as polyps, cysts, fibroids, endometriosis, and even certain tumors. Studies have shown that alcohol consumption increases estrogen levels in postmenopausal women on HRT and increases their chances of breast cancer. But here's the kicker. When our estrogen is elevated, so is our cortisol, which will affect our blood sugar balance, our thyroid health, our adrenal health, and nervous system in general. Estrogen also increases histamine, which could cause symptoms such as headaches and migraines, hives, digestive issues, fatigue, and even bladder issues such as interstitial cystitis. Alcohol in general has been found to disrupt the communication between the immune, nervous, and endocrine system and can cause hormonal disturbances that can lead to a lot of the issues we've already mentioned, such as thyroid problems, PMS and fertility issues, but also immune dysregulation and bone disease. Now at this point in the video, you may be feeling suitably disappointed or even resentful towards me and hey, I get it. Why are you the way that you are? Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. I like a glass of red wine as much as the next person, but let's not kid ourselves here. If you're struggling with hormonal, fertility, skin, thyroid, weight, or adrenal issues, drinking alcohol is most likely not helping matters. Now, this does not mean that we can never enjoy an alcohol drink again, but alcohol needs to be looked at in the context of our current health status and what we're looking to achieve. Ask yourself, at this stage of your health journey, is it truly serving you? Now, it can be hard to avoid alcohol when it's such a big part of socializing, but there are plenty of great non-alcoholic drinks you can experiment with. Sparkling water with fresh lime or lemon and some Angostura bitters is a lovely refreshing drink. Mint and fresh lime are a beautiful combination too. A lot of bars and restaurants now serve kombucha and sophisticated alcohol-free herbal options. And remember, if you work on your hormonal balance and blood sugar balance, you will most likely find yourself not feeling the need for a glass of wine to deal with the day's stressors. Try it and see. If you're struggling with some of the symptoms mentioned in this video, consider working with a naturopathic nutritional therapist to find a bespoke diet for your needs. If you found this video helpful, be sure to click that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our future content. Until next time.